Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Say, how'd it get to be so late so early? I can't remember our being early for anything since the day we was m- were married. What time is it? Oh, just about midnight. What are you stopping for? A red light. Oh. Don't you ever stop for red lights? Of course I do. You know, I like the city at night. I feel as if we owned it. <laughs> so quiet and empty. Can I drive, David? I'm not a bit sleepy, and you are. You're yawning again. Uh, I'm not that sleepy. Also, I want to sleep between sheets, not wrapped up in a sheet. Just when are you going to admit that I can drive and beautifully? Oh, you do it beautifully, all right. Very graceful, spontaneous. But you don't do it well. And this is a perfect time for me to practice when there aren't any other cars around. You haven't got your license. Yes, you? I have. It's in that little compartment there with the registration. No, some other time. We're almost home. Why are you stopping now? A red light. Do they go on all night? They never close an eye. I could go without closing mine tonight. <laughs> Say, David, did that kitten look better to you today? About the same. Maybe he'll get better, seeing as he's not getting worse. Maybe. Oh, David, we are almost home, with all the stars out, too. Cheer up. First, we have to go to the garage and leave the car. Oh, that doesn't cheer me. Can't we just park it right in front of the house? You can't park in the street overnight. It's against the law. But look at all those cars staying out. David, let ours, too. We'll get a ticket. Ah, there isn't a policeman in sight. Mm, Well, all right. I don't know why I let you influence me like this. Because you want to be influenced. <laughs> I'll press the button to put the top down. Or is it when it's up? And up when it's down. I can never figure it out. Just uh, press the button. Here she goes. I'll lock my door from the inside and come out on your side. Well, you all set? Yep. Locked? I'm doing it now, but I can't see very well. Too bad we couldn't park it near the lamp post. But this is near the door. There. I got it? Look at her, David. She's the prettiest one on the block. Cars are all she's, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, like hens. <laughs> Come on, let's hurry. I thought you weren't sleeping. Oh, I'm not. It's just being home. <laughs> It's no, mother. no, no. It's it's not mother. Maybe she's sick or, or... Claudia, it's probably a wrong number. At this hour? Who else would call it this hour but a wrong number? But why us? Because we're the wrong number, and boy, am I going to give it to him. Hello. Yes. Claudia Norton. What? Who wants her? Police department. David, ask them if Look, they... um, this is her husband. You can tell me anything you'll tell her. What is it? You're not going to talk to her. You're going to talk to me. David, what do they want? Is it anything about Mom? What's that? Our car was stolen. Oh, is that all? I was afraid it was something wrong with Mama. Well, um, where did you find it, officer? It's a black convertible with a tan top. And well, I'll be... How did you get there? Where is it? You uh, want us to come now? David, it's half past three. Mm, oh, all right. All right, we'll come right over. Well? The car was stolen. And I hope you realize why. Because we parked it on the street? Mm-hmm. Really, the things that happen while a person sleeps. Come on, get dressed. We'd better hurry, too. I've got to be at the office by nine. David, it's all my fault. I didn't say it. No, I didn't but say you it. were thinking it. Come on, hurry up. I'll be ready in a second. David, you haven't told me where it is. The police have it. In Brooklyn. In Brooklyn? That's one 
wonderful, David. What's so wonderful about it? I've never been to Brooklyn. <laughs> Yes, folks, what can I do for you at this hour in the morning? Uh, the name is Norton, officer. We're here about the stolen car. Uh, when about it? Well, you called us to come over and get it. Let me see now. Uh, the stolen car. It's the black convertible. I spoke to you on the telephone. Oh, yeah. You know where we found it? Right plunk in the middle of the trolley car tracks. I'd have guess. Lucky we didn't fill the tank, isn't it, David? Why, that thief might have driven straight to California. We'd never have gotten it back. Well, you haven't got it back yet. There are a few essential preliminaries. Why, it's our car. Miss Claudia. Uh, yes, Sergeant? Uh, you, I take it, are uh, Hartley Norton? Uh, no, officer. I'm David Norton. Oh, you are? Uh, did I just talk to you on the phone? You did. Well, let me get this straight. This young lady is Claudia Norton, and you are David Norton. Right. But the car is registered in Hartley Norton's name. Uh, where is Hartley Norton? He's in Europe. He'll be home any day. Fine. Then he shall have his car any day. But it's our car. We'd like very much to have it now. We've come all the way from New York. Claudia, I'll take care of this. Uh, Sergeant, Hartley Norton is my brother. Lovely. And he gave the car to me. What Hartley does with his car is up to Hartley. He can do whatever he wishes with his own property. And since he gave his car to me, it belongs to me. If he says so, it does. He said so. How can we have it back? Uh, Claudia. Uh, you can have it back when Mr. Hartley Norton says so. But he can't, not now. Precisely my point. He can't say so, so I can't say so neither. I'm only a sergeant, not a Santa Claus. Oh, we're not asking you to give us the car. Hartley already did that. How do you suppose we had it so it could be stolen from us? An interesting point. Uh, officer, if you don't mind, uh, how did you happen to call us if you insist the car is not ours? I stabbed in the dark, Mr. Norton. I found Mrs. Norton's license in the compartment, and I had no reason not to believe that your wife was not Mr. Hartley's wife. However, so as your voyage in these wee hours is not entirely in vain, I shall permit you to fill out a form reporting the loss of his car. He shall thereby get it back first. But he doesn't want it back. He doesn't like it. Oh, David, Claudia, what's all the fuss about? Uh, Claudia, let me handle this, please. Sergeant, I'll wire my brother in the morning and get a reply immediately. I'll forward it to you so you have proof of my authorization to drive the car. Then you shall have it back. Now, uh, leave us make it simple, just according to all rules and regulations. You make out this nice form 482A, modification 399C, declaring your car is stolen. You will file this with your precinct. They will list the car stolen, and we will... Uh, give me the form, Sergeant. I want you to comprehend that none of this is personal. Sergeant, what if we don't fill out this form? It's all settled, Claudia. We are filling Wait it out. Wait a minute, David. Let the little lady speak. Until this form is filled out, the car really isn't stolen at all, is it? Not officially. So, David, if the sergeant would let us, we could take the car now. Not fill out the form and no one would know. Uh, you believe we're us, don't you, officer? Do I? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I do believe you're us. I even know who your brother-in-law is. And seeing it's all in the family, I guess I'd give you the car. See, David? If Mr. Norton had some identification. I've uh, got it right here in my wallet. Lovely. David. Shh, darling, we'll be out of here in a minute now. David. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, um, uh, I have it right, right in here, Well, officer. take your time, take your time. It's a quiet night. I thought I had it. <laughs> Just a second. David. What is it? It's about your wallet. I know I'm looking for it. But you haven't got it. What's that? It's in your gray suit. What? I put it there to save your time in the morning. Um, I only wanted to help. You only wanted to help when we left the car parked on the street, too. <laughs> what is so funny, officer? You are a very lucky man, Mr. Norton. Mm. When my wife takes my wallet out of my pants, she doesn't switch it to another pair. Oh, no. She puts it right into hers. She keeps it. But that's dishonest. Now, you'd better give me that form. I'm so lucky. Uh, Mrs. Norton, you really switched his wallet to his other trousers? Of course I did. David, tell him, don't I always? No, she does. Remarkable. You are a woman among hundreds. You are a very honest young lady. I said to myself when you first came in, 
That young lady has an honest face. David, is that good? And virtue should be rewarded. So leave us forget the forms and reports. You mean you're going to... I mean getting your car and skedoodle. I go off duty in three minutes, and the next sergeant, uh, he's not a married man. The car's right out here in the alley. David. What now? I'll have to drive. You will not. We've had enough trouble. Sergeant, it's against the law to drive without a license. It is? Would you give a man who did that a ticket if you caught him? I would. Even a friend of yours? Especially. David. It's in your other pants, remember, Mr. Norton? All right, all right, all right. You win. Thank you, Sergeant. It's on me, Mrs. Norton. The little lady drives tonight. This is the little lady's night. And there's your car. Good as new and enough gas to get you home. Good night. Good night, Sergeant. Sweet dreams. Move over, David. I'm driving, remember? I moved over. Well, off we go. Goodbye and thanks for everything. Nighty night, Mrs. Norton. My regards to Hartley. Don't forget to turn on the ignition. I won't. Oh, look, David. The sun's rising and it's shining on all the buildings in New York. Isn't it beautiful? Lovely, lovely. Well, what are you stopping for? Red light. Or don't you stop for red light. What a night, what a night. You can go to sleep on my shoulder, David, if you like. I'm not sleepy now. It's early. David, isn't it a funny thing? When we first went to bed tonight, before the car was stolen, it was so late. Now, three whole hours later, it's early. <laughs> it's too late to at? go to bed, and it's too early to get up. Now, take the next turn, darling. We'll see the sunrise on the harbor. What do you say? Let's. And, and we'll see the moon set on the river, too. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that in quite some time. Here, you know, turn David, right over here. Spending a night up is nice once in a while. Gives you sort of a, a completely different point of view. It certainly does. Do you remember the last time that we drove along like this? Do you remember where it was? No, where was it? Well, it was about uh, a day and a half after we were married. Oh, we were I riding remember. down that little highway. Oh, darling. Remember what the sun looked like then? You remember that? Yes, I do, darling. That was nice. That was nice, but, uh, hey, driver. Driver, you better be careful. Why? You better keep both hands over on the wheel. All right. <laughs> All story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. Some things change and you're glad of it. But when prices change only one way, up, that makes marketing a headache. If shopping becomes a burden for you, here's a tip. Pause wherever you can see that familiar red cooler and have an ice-cold Coke. Then you'll be able to shop refreshed. And it'll please you to think that the cost of refreshing Coca-Cola is still only five cents. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now, this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes.